SUV does not lift off on fire alone. It lifts off on control. Before ignition commands are issued, before the launch mount releases its grip, the fate of the mission is already riding on an invisible system buried inside the booster. That system is the fuel lines, and on Super Heavy, they are tasked with managing energy on a scale that pushes fluid dynamics, material science, and control theory to their absolute limits. This is not plumbing. This is precision engineering under conditions where failure happens violently and without warning. At full load, Super Heavy carries more than 7.3 million pounds of propellant, split between liquid oxygen and liquid methane. That mass alone is staggering, but the real challenge begins when that propellant starts moving. At liftoff, tens of thousands of pounds of cryogenic fluid per second are pulled through the vehicle, routed through manifolds, valves, and feed lines, and delivered to 33 Raptor engines that all demand exact mixture ratios at the same time. If the flow is uneven by even a few percent, the consequences cascade immediately into thrust imbalance, vibration, or engine shutdown. What separates Super Heavy from every rocket before it is not just raw size, but coupling. Falcon 9 feeds 9 engines that are relatively isolated from one another. Super Heavy feeds 33 engines that are hydraulically linked through shared propellant systems. When one engine throttles up or gimbals, it changes local pressure and flow conditions, and those changes propagate through the entire network. The fuel lines are not static conduits. They are part of a constantly shifting feedback loop between engines, structure, and guidance software. Cryogenic temperature makes this problem far more severe. Liquid oxygen flows at roughly negative 297 degrees Fahrenheit and liquid methane at around negative 259 degrees Fahrenheit. At these temperatures, metals contract significantly, seals tighten, and many alloys become brittle. A pipe that looks perfectly rigid at room temperature can shrink by inches once chilled, introducing stress at joints and welds. Super Heavy's fuel lines must tolerate that contraction during loading, then survive rapid heating during ascent as engine exhaust and aerodynamic friction raise external temperatures by hundreds of degrees. This is why SpaceX relies on advanced stainless steel alloys that behave counterintuitively. They become tougher as they get colder. These steels retain ductility at cryogenic temperatures while maintaining high strength under pressure. But material choice alone does not solve the problem. The geometry of the fuel lines matters just as much. Straight pipes concentrate stress. Bends, loops, and offsets allow controlled movement. Every curve in Super Heavy's plumbing exists because engineers learned, often through failure, that rigidity is the enemy of survivability. One of the most dangerous threats lurking inside these lines is vibration. Rocket engineers fear pogo oscillation for good reason. Pogo is a self-reinforcing feedback loop where fluctuations in fuel flow alter thrust, thrust excites structural vibrations, and those vibrations then disturb the fuel flow even more. During the Apollo program, Pogo nearly tore Saturn V apart and endangered astronauts. On Super Heavy, the risk is amplified dramatically. 33 engines drawing from shared manifolds create countless opportunities for resonant interactions. To suppress pogo and other oscillatory modes, SpaceX treats fuel lines like tuned mechanical systems. Pipe diameters are selected not just for flow capacity, but for acoustic behavior. Lengths are adjusted to shift resonance frequencies out of dangerous bands. Accumulators and dampers are installed to absorb pressure spikes before they can reflect back through the system. Even internal surface finish matters. Microscopic roughness can trigger cavitation, the formation of vapor bubbles in a liquid, which collapses violently and damages hardware. Nowhere is precision more critical than in the propellant manifolds. These massive structures act as distribution hubs, dividing flow evenly to dozens of engines. Their task sounds simple, but the physics are brutal. Liquid oxygen, in particular, is unforgiving. It is not only extremely cold, but highly reactive. Under the wrong conditions, friction heating or impact with contaminants can cause spontaneous ignition. That means every weld must be flawless, every internal surface smooth, 
every material chemically compatible with oxygen service. Early Starship tests revealed just how sensitive these systems are. Fires and leaks during ground tests were not random accidents, they were signals. They exposed where pressure gradients were sharper than expected, where flow separation occurred, where oxygen behaved unpredictably. SpaceX responded not by slowing down, by iterating aggressively. Manifold designs changed, routing was altered, wall thicknesses were adjusted, each failure added resolution to the engineering picture. The most dangerous moment for the entire propellant system happens before liftoff. Engine startup is a precisely timed sequence measured in milliseconds. Before ignition, fuel lines must be chilled so that incoming propellant does not instantly boil. Valves begin opening in a carefully orchestrated order. Turbo pumps spin up to extraordinary rotational speeds, pulling propellant at rates that would drain an Olympic swimming pool in seconds. Any timing mismatch during this phase can cause a hard start, flameout, or overpressure event. Super Heavy must execute this startup sequence for 33 engines nearly simultaneously. No two Raptor engines are exactly alike. Minor manufacturing differences affect how quickly pumps respond, how pressures rise, and how mixtures stabilize. The fuel system compensates for this variability using dense networks of sensors and high-speed control algorithms. Pressure and temperature are monitored continuously. Valve positions are adjusted in real time. What looks like a single ignition event from the outside is actually dozens of independent micro-events synchronized with extreme precision. Once the engines are running, the challenge evolves again. As Super Heavy ascends, acceleration increases rapidly, changing how propellant settles inside the tanks. Slosh dynamics shift inlet pressures. Engines throttle down to limit aerodynamic loads, then ramp back up as the atmosphere thins. Gimbal movements introduce asymmetrical forces. All of this feeds back into the fuel lines, which must remain stable despite constantly changing boundary conditions. Redundancy and isolation are critical here. Each engine feed path includes valves that allow it to be isolated if something goes wrong. If a Raptor experiences abnormal behavior, the system can shut it down without starving neighboring engines or triggering system-wide pressure disturbances. This capability is one reason Super Heavy can tolerate engine failures mid-flight, a requirement for rapid reusability and high launch cadence. Thermal management adds yet another layer of complexity. Inside the fuel lines, propellant remains cryogenic. Outside, engine exhaust, radiant heat, and aerodynamic heating raise temperatures dramatically. These thermal gradients induce stress that can fatigue metal over repeated cycles. SpaceX counters this with insulation, strategic routing away from hot zones, and controlled flow rates that help regulate temperature. Even so, flight tests revealed hot spots that no ground test or simulation fully predicted, prompting further redesigns. What makes Super Heavy's fuel lines especially important is their role beyond Earth launch. This system is a prototype for the future of spaceflight. Orbital refueling will require transferring cryogenic propellant between vehicles in microgravity. Long-duration missions will require storing and managing super-cold fluids for months. Lunar and Martian operations will introduce new challenges, reduced gravity, dust contamination, extreme temperature swings, and limited maintenance options. The lessons learned in Super Heavy's plumbing directly inform those future systems. Many of the most valuable insights came from dramatic failures. Ruptured lines revealed hidden pressure wave interactions. Fires showed how oxygen behaves under real flow conditions. Valve timing issues exposed software-hardware couplings that simulations missed. Rather than treating these events as setbacks, SpaceX treated them as data. Designs were hardened, margins increased, control logic refined. Each test made the system more resilient. When Super Heavy finally launches, the spectacle is overwhelming. Flames, shock diamonds, and thunder dominate the view. But none of that happens without quiet success deep inside the booster. Pipes that do not resonate, valves that open and close at exactly the right millisecond, manifolds that keep chaos evenly distributed across dozens of engines. If even one of those components fails, the mission ends before it truly begins. 
That is why Super Heavy's fuel lines deserve serious attention. They represent mastery over energy flow on a scale humanity has rarely attempted. This is the infrastructure that makes full reusability possible, that enables rapid launch cadence, and that lays the groundwork for sustained human presence beyond Earth. Engines may provide thrust, but fuel lines provide control. If this breakdown gave you a new perspective on what actually makes Super Heavy work, share it with another SpaceX fan who thinks rockets are only about engines. Let me know which system you want dissected next, turbo pumps, hot staging interfaces, or orbital refueling plumbing, and subscribe for more deep technical dives like this, because the future of spaceflight is not just about power, it's about mastering the flow.